In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can connect the Morningstar MC8 MIDI controller to Loopy Pro. Now there's loads of MIDI pedals out there in the world, but the Morningstar MC needs a little bit of setup before you can connect it to something like Loopy Pro. But get it right and it's absolutely fabulous. Now I have the Morningstar MC8 and we've got it here on the desk. And what I've done is I've set it so I've got a couple of different programs, but we're gonna get a brand new program today on program number four, I'm gonna set it up for Loopy Pro how I want it to be. You've got to think of the Morningstar as a completely empty shell. And you've got to tell it what CC number it needs to be. Now certain loopers or certain effects processors dictate which CC number you need. But with Loopy HD and Loopy Pro, you can dictate which CC number it's listening to, and then you can just tell the Morningstar which numbers they are, and then you can marry them up. Now I did a video about connecting the Morningstar to Loopy HD, and if you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna leave it in the cards now. But as Loopy Pro has so many different features, what I wanna do is show you a couple of different things we can do with the Morningstar and Loopy Pro. So right now I've got the Morningstar plugged into my computer and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Morningstar editor which is actually on the web. You don't need any software at all but you do need a web browser and make sure that the firmware is up to date. You can find information about that on Morningstar's YouTube channel and also Morningstar's website. So using Google Chrome I'm just gonna Google Morningstar FX and it comes up here, it's morningstarfx.com. It shows you the web page, and you've got obviously the MC3, the MC6, the MC8, and then new ones like the MIDI box and the ML5. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to support, and we're gonna go to device editor. What we're gonna do is click access Morningstar editor, and if your Morningstar is out of date for the firmware, it will actually prompt you, and you can get it up to date. When you click this, then what it'll do is it'll automatically bring up the Morningstar editor, which is here, and then it just says select a device to connect. So so I've already got it plugged in just by USB and it just sees it, it just sees it straight away. So we just click it and it says basically some function is disabled when in editor mode, change this in the editor settings. You don't have to if you don't want to. So first of all, you can see it says Morningstar MIDI editor and there's some settings here at the top, but we're gonna use bank number four. I've got a couple set up for other things, but bank number four is what we're gonna use for Loopy Pro. Then you can also see the presets, which is A, B, C, etc. So we can actually go all the way through and you can see A right through to V and there's also expression, which is the ones on the back. Now on the Morningstar, it says editor and you can can even toggle a page so you can see on page two on bank number four. So you've got page one and page two. So there's eight buttons there, so there's 16 options. So first of all, what I wanna do is edit the bank itself and give it a name. So even though we've got the preset here, I'm gonna to go to the bank and we go bank settings, give it a name. So we're gonna call this one Loopy Pro. If I click save bank settings, it'll say success. And now on the page there, it actually says Loopy Pro as opposed to the other ones. And I can prove that by going here and it literally says Loopy Pro as opposed to the HD and all the other ones I've set. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to edit preset. Now this is where it depends on how you've got Loopy Pro set up and this is why it's so varied. If you just wanna press preset A and then press it to do something and then press it again to stop doing something, that's just a simple MIDI control, but you'll quickly see that you can do lots of different things with one button press. So right now I'm gonna press A just to make sure we're on it and it's on there. If I were to press H, you'll notice that jumps over to H, but I can go back to A and this is everything we need to control preset A. Now with the Morningstar system, it is really, really cool because as I said, you dictate it, but you can actually send up to 16 messages on that one button press. Imagine if you had Loopy Pro, but you've also got another effects pedal. You could press one thing and it could change the loop and change the effects pedal, which is MIDI as well at the same time. There's also different ways to press. So what you can do is the action type can be just a press, or you can actually have all these different ones. You've got release, long release, release all, double tap, long double tap, on first engage, send the only this. So there's loads of different ones. Now the one we're gonna play with today is just press. Okay, so as you press it down, the type, you've got loads of different types here. So you scroll down, there's absolutely loads and they have loads of different things. There's actually ones that you've got set up like a Kempler tuner or the Monster ML5X that they sell, of course. So if you wanted to do like a MIDI clock or just tap at the tempo, you can actually do MIDI clock tap and as with each tap, it'll affect that and you can MIDI learn that straight away. But the one we're gonna play with today is just control change. So if you go to control change and then it asks me what we're gonna do. Now, when you put a control type in or any kind of type that you're gonna put in, it comes up and says open MIDI dictionary. And this has been growing over the past couple of years and people have been putting in things for like boss or uh, head rush or line 
6 or TC Helicon or TC Electronics and they've been putting in their own, own ones they've been finding the ones from the manufacturers so you can just program it up with that device and it's really really easy but we're going to do our own one today and what we're going to do is we're literally going to use CC number one. It doesn't matter. We can actually dictate to the iPad which CC number we're going to be controlling. We're going to give this a value. Now, in order to turn a button on, what we need is we need it to be 127. Now, you can type it in if you want to. So we can actually go into there, but we'll just scroll down and 127 is on and zero is off. So if we do that on MIDI channel number one, that's fine. We're not going to use an expression paddle and we're going to leave that there. Now, imagine you've pressed the button down. That's 127. We need to tell it to what happens when you lift your foot. So we're going to do another control, another message, and this time it's release. And we're going to do release the control change. And it's still on control number one. And this time we're going to leave it at zero. So right at the top here, you've got short name, toggle name, and long name. This is the name that's going to come up on here. So what we're going to do is the short name is actually this little space here where it says empty. And we're going to replace it with record stroke dub. Okay, so what I'm going to do is input A is going to be record and overdub, and then I'm going to have this as stop. And then what I'm going to do, the top four here, I'm going to personally use the first four loops. So we're going to select the loop, and then I can record and stop over each one. Re record and play, and then stop. You can have the toggle name, which comes up here, just under here. So let's call that record stroke dub as well and if you want to give it a long name you can do so you can say record and overdub per track or select track whatever you want it to do i'm not going to put anything there as soon as i hit save preset it saves it and you can see right there we've got record dub if i click it and you can actually see a flash on the web browser you can see it's actually clicking there straight away now that is the first one done all I've then got to do is choose what I'm going to put on the other ones. So let me do the next one. So I'm going to go over to uh, B and B, which is on page there. It's this one here. So this one is going to literally be stop. So again, what we're going to do is let's go in here. We're going to press it down. We're going to use a control change and we're going to use control change number two. The value again, right to the very top, 127 on MIDI channel number one. And then the release is going to be the same. It's going to be a control change. It's going to be on number two, but it's going to be zero. And I'm going to save that to the preset. So now that comes up as stop. Now this is only half the battle. What we need to then do is program the Morningstar up so then it knows what CC numbers it is. And then what we need to do is we need to tell Loopy Pro what those CC numbers are. So I'm gonna carry on and make this up the way I want it and show you what I've done. And then what we'll do is we'll connect it to Loopy Pro. Hi, welcome back. Now, let me show you what I've done. I've got 16 buttons here, technically, because I've got two banks. So preset A is record and overdub. Again, it's on CC number one. Again, on and then off, so two commands. Then we've got start and stop. So when you start and stop on Loopy Pro, obviously, it's just going to press one button. It'll stop the whole session. It'll start the whole session, and we can do that, no problem. So that is command number two. Then I've got half, and what that means is half the selected track, so half the loop length, as it were, so half the measure. So if I was on two bars, it would go down to one bar for the next recording, and the same for this one. So that's CC number three, and then that's CC number four, which is double. So I'm going to put that as double the selected track. Then selecting the tracks, I've literally got loop one, two, three, and four. So that is CC number five, CC number six, CC number seven, and CC number eight. Then we move over to toggling the page. So then we've got five, six, seven, eight, which is CC number 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then these four at the bottom are obviously uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've got solo. Whichever track I've got selected, it'll solo that track and mute all the others. Then we've got reverse. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put that track in reverse mode. And then I can toggle it on reverse or back to normal. Then I've got delete. It's going to wipe out all loops. Uh, but it'll keep that session there, obviously, for the next song. And that's the whole idea for performing it live. And the last one is actually tap tempo. So this is CC number 12. And then what I'm going to do is I can actually do it tap tempo now I've got it as a control change for this one but I could technically do this and do midi clock tap there is no cc number it's actually midi clock tap so I don't need to put a cc number in midi clock is just being sent to loopy pro and of course if I click it more than once it's going to calculate the space in between to calculate the bpm when you save all this this is all saved internally inside the morning star and then when you plug it back in using a web browser it brings it all back again but you can 
back it up to your computer if you want to. To do that, all you need to do is at the top here, you can actually go to controller backup and you can download your controller presets onto your computer to save to then put them back on. Say, for example, you wanted to change it for a different preset and you haven't got the internet, you can actually have that there for all your banks. You can restore your controller preset as well. Maybe you've bought a different one and you just want to put them all back on without having to pre-program everything all over again. It's very useful, it's very handy, and thank you, Monistar, it saves me a lot of time. Now, onto Loopy Pro. So welcome to Loopy Pro. This is how I've got Loopy Pro set up. It's eight loops across in different colors and three down. So I can have things grouped. So I've got things like maybe a verse, a bridge, a chorus if I wanted to, or I could just have different drum patterns with different progressive loops. I've got a couple of things set up, but that doesn't really matter right now. That is just how you set up Loopy Pro. And I've got a tutorial all about Loopy Pro, which if you wanna have a look at that, again, I'll put that in the cards now. Now for ease of use, what I've done with the Morningstar is I've actually connected the Widi Master. The Widi Master is a little Bluetooth device that uses the power from the main power that you connect it from. And it just sends MIDI over Bluetooth. Again, I've done a review of that and I think it is fabulous and it's really low latency and it works really well with pedals. So what we need to do is we have all our CC numbers all set up on the Morningstar. We now need to tell Loopy Pro what that is. But first of all, it needs to understand where that is coming from. So what we do is we go into three little dots here and we've got MIDI control. And what we need to do is add a new MIDI connection. Now right now I've got the Morningstar technically as a Bluetooth device. So if I go to Bluetooth connections, you can actually see it's there. It's actually flashing blue just in the corner there you can see. And it's there, Widi Master not connected. So if I now give this a tap, this is actually connecting via the operating system. It's actually connecting through the system, not Loopy Pro. So now it's connected, that is solid blue. That means means it is connected directly. And that's great, that's all I need to do. This is really useful for pedals. Certainly if you're gonna be doing this live, I don't want loads of cables around, so I don't have to have a physical cable connected from the Widi Master straight through to Loopy Pro. I'll put links in the description to everything I'm using, and obviously if you wanna pick yourself up a Morningstar or a Widi Master, please be my guest. They are affiliated links, which means that I do get a little bit of money if you buy one, but at no extra cost to you. Now. Back to what we're doing. So we've now got the Morning Star talking to Loopy Pro via Bluetooth. Awesome. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Loopy Pro what to do with these buttons, and we need to just marry them up. I've got loads of options here. So we can go into the three little lines and actually click MIDI Learn. When you go into MIDI Learn, all the options become like a white haze, and that means they're selectable. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with actually not record and overdub, but I'm going to start with loop number one, which is E, which when we set it up was CC number five. So I'm gonna pick the red one at the top left-hand corner. Now, if I did that and I click it, it says, there you go, CC five on Widi Master Bluetooth. So it's recognized it and that's great. If I was to just literally close this down now and just click this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Three, that's working, four, that's great. One, two, three, but what I want to do is I don't want to actually select this to record. What I want to do is I want to use this to select the loop and then hit record and start and stop with these ones. I can still use the empty option, which is really useful. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to MIDI learn this again. But I'm instead of using play stop, which is the top here, you'll see there's an option for actions and go back one. So now play stops basically on CC number five. I can actually say, don't do that, go back one, we're gonna select. So select a specific clip, try saying that quickly, and we're gonna say select clip one, listen for MIDI, that one, and that's it. Now you can basically come out of here and all it's gonna do is if I tap it, it's selected it and there's a little white dot underneath. Now what I can do is I can do record an overdub or start and stop on that specific loop because I've selected the loop. So you could either have it where you go record an overdub on each one if you wanted to, and that's fine. Um, or what you could do is you can record an overdub here. Now you could use the same CC number for different things. So again, let's go into MIDI Learn. Let's tap that one again. And then it says, again, just play stop listening for commands. So let's click it and say record if empty. So now it's got two commands for the both the CC numbers for doing different things. So it's gonna select it and record at the same time. 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 But it will only record if it's empty. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prove that by going MIDI learn, click the yellow one, and we're gonna go back one and click select only, select clip two. And I'm just gonna double check, yeah, that's select clip number two. So let's go select clip two, listening for MIDI. It's gonna be that one and it's CC6 and that's it, MIDI on. And I'm just gonna get out of there. So now if I select this, 
you can see the little white dot moves, but it hasn't recorded on it. It's just selected it. Now, if I select this one again, it's actually muted it, and I can mute and unmute it as much as I want to. So this is really powerful, and this is basically something where you can customize this. You could record on loop number four just by hitting it, and then it records straight away. But then it's also selected it, but then if you want to select another one to then stop or half the tempo, you could select it half the tempo, double the tempo. I would prefer to actually have maybe the first one to record when empty because that would be an open loop, that would be the beginning of the session, but then the other ones just be selectable. The reason being is because I want to select it and maybe change it to maybe half the length or double length before I hit record. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go back into MIDI Learn, and we've got these two here, you can see there's a white ring around them. So I'm going to go to the green one, which is the third one, I'm literally just going to click select and it's going to be that one. And then that one is going to be select for loop number four, which is CC number eight. So we've got four loops selected. So now if we close this down, if I was to erase that, it knows that if I select any of these, it's fine. But if I select the first one, it's going to record straight away. It's going to record straight away. So let's get record and overdub sorted. So we're going to go record overdub for this one. We're going to hit record, and then it's going to be uh, record on clip number one, and that's fine. The action is toggle. And then if the clip has audio, you overdub it. And that's fine. Listening for MIDI command. And it's going to be that one, CC number one. And then what we're going to do is the target is not going to be the clip, the specific clip. It's going to be the selected clip. So now what it's going to do is if that clip is selected, you can record on it. Right, so let's recap. And we've got a couple of different things going on here now. Now I've been able to select these. So if I go loop one, loop two, loop three, loop four, but you've noticed when I press loop one because I've said record, it's also recording at the same time. I'll have to press it again. And now it's gonna loop that recording. Loop one, loop two, loop three, loop four. There we go. So we'll just stop that for now and we'll just clear that out. But you can see that I can select any of these tracks. Now what I've also done as well, I've said record and overdub. And as I press this, whichever one is selected, it'll record it on. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and there we go, it's recording. Now if I actually go over to H, which is loop four, and I hit record, it'll record as well and it'll record in time. It'll record as well and it'll record in So this is really cool. We haven't even scratched the surface of actually getting to half and double. And the other thing we haven't done as well is the solo reverse delete and tap tempo. But the thing is you can MIDI command anything, including things like the mixer. So if I was to MIDI learn, uh, we can MIDI learn solo. So we could say solo and then solo the specific loop and then all the others would just mute out. With delete, what you can do is you can literally say delete all tracks. So we could actually select a track and say delete everything uh, and it'll go. Or you could say delete just the selected track. It depends on what you want. It's totally up to you. Now I can continue to MIDI learn these together and show you lots of different things. I just wanted to show you how this works and it's really, really good. The great thing about the Morningstar is you can obviously MIDI command multiple things if you wanted to. So with one button press, you can actually send 16 commands per button press, which is crazy. But the great thing is with the Loopy Pro, it does the same thing. You can actually control more than one MIDI command for the same thing. So right here you can see on loop one or clip one as it were, I've got CC number five for both play and stop. If it's basically empty, just make sure you record. And then I've also got select. Now I'm gonna turn this one off and just kill this one. And then all I've got now is just select. So now if we just were able to clear these tracks and then close that down, it will literally only select it. It's not gonna record on any track until I press the record button which is A, which is this one right now. This one right now. This one right now. So I hope you found that useful. And let me know in the comment section below if you're using a Morningstar or if you're using Loopy Pro. And if you're not aware about this already, I actually am going to create a playlist for all the Loopy Pro videos and live streams that I'm going to do. So I'm going to put this one with it as well. So if you want to watch the Loopy Pro tutorial, then please do. And thank you very much for those who have watched and commented. If you have been watching this video and you've liked it, then give it a thumbs up. It really helps me and it helps the channel grow. And it's what helped us get to over 10,000 subscribers, which I'm very, very grateful for every single one of you. And if you want something for free, 
free, go to my website, which is johnpaulmusic.co.uk. Scroll all the way to the bottom, and there is a free PDF of how to loop, looping tips that I've given away as a PDF for you to keep. You can also book me for a consultation if you need my help with looping or live streaming or any of the things we talk about on the channel. That's available on the website as well, and you'll be able to see that. You can book me for one session or a group of sessions. It's entirely up to you. So that's the Morning Star and Loopy Pro. Believe me, there's going to be more Loopy Pro videos coming. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.